when you hear something really exciting, um, maybe uh, that something new is changing at school or something exciting is going on in the world around you, do you stop and think about where that news has come from? Maybe you see something on social media or on the internet and you think, wow, that's amazing. Or on the flip side, you might see something and think, oh my goodness, that's terrible. Do you stop and think, where has that information come from? The whole concept of fake news might seem like a new phenomenon, something that's really only appeared in the last five years or so because of the prevalence of social media. But the reality is manipulating information for um, somebody else's benefit has been going on forever and ever. There's lots of information around at the moment in terms of the effect of COVID, the effect of um, the social distancing measures, what's uh, really going on behind the scenes. You might have heard conspiracy stories about how the virus started. You might have heard things about how um, governments are manipulating data. You might have heard things about how uh, different things are being done in different countries. When we hear or read something, it's really important to check the authority of where that thing's come from. There are great websites out there that will do that work for you. The BBC News site will often do a reality check on some of the stories that are um, around at the moment to help you understand what's right and what's just being fabricated. In today's passage, Jesus is challenged about what authority he is saying and doing things under. It's not that he's being accused of fake news. Well, actually, maybe in a way he is, because what his teaching is a different interpretation on some of the ancient scriptures that have been talked about and looked at by scholars for years and have been discussed in the temples for years. And Jesus is bringing a fresh uh, set of eyes and understanding on these. And he's saying things that go against the normality and the normal understanding about some, what some of these things mean. And so quite rightly, he's being challenged to be to, to prove, to demonstrate what authority he's got to be saying the things that he's saying. And he comes back at them by explaining that the authority that he has comes from God. Now, each one of us, when we look at the person of Jesus, you know, a real historic person for whom there is ample evidence that he really did exist and he really did say and do the things that he did. For anybody looking at Jesus, that's a question that we have to ask. Where's this guy coming from? What authority is he bringing to the things that he says? Because if we want to be disciples, people who follow Jesus and do things the way that he does things and in the ways that he says we should do things, we should be making sure that what he's saying is valid and true and not fake. C.S. Lewis, the guy that wrote The Lion, the Witch in the Wardrobe, also wrote loads and loads of things about Christian faith. And he says this amazing thing about Jesus. He says, when you look at Jesus properly and the things that he says and the things that he does, you can only conclude one of three things about him. He was either a lunatic because the stuff that he says is crazy and the things that he does are pretty crazy. Or that he's some evil malevolent person who's trying to manipulate people turning them away from their families their careers their lives that they're on or he really is who he says he is he really is the son of god and he's really doing the thing that he says he's doing which is transforming the world and lewis captures that by saying that jesus is either mad or he's bad or he's god so we all have to ask that question. What authority has Jesus got? And our faith will decide whether we believe that he's, on, he's working on God's authority. The ultimate truth. The thing that can never be faked, that can never be disproved. Or if he's not working on that authority, then he's got something else going on in his life. You have to make that choice. Is this guy mad? Is he bad? Or is he really God? And if he is really God, then why would you choose not to believe the things that he says?